This video is going to be a continuation of the first five videos in this series on the restoration of the Sears Silvertone amplifier. If you haven't seen those videos, uh, click up here now to take a look at them first. I urge you to do so. I didn't plan on making this video. In our last video, we were doing the final demonstration and having this hooked up to a guitar and actually playing it. We were able to hear that there are artifacts in these speakers that, that didn't belong there hooking the amp up to another set of speakers. We hear that the amp is running fine and the problem is in the speaker cabinet itself. And it's time to dig in and see what the damage is. I wanna break this up into a couple of parts as I go along here. First of all, I wanna get this cable out of the equation. It's kind of old and nasty. And once I get the cable out of the equation, I wanna split off the two speakers, uh, check the resistance and impedance of the speakers, run them separately, uh, see if maybe one is perfectly fine and just one is broken. And if that's the case, or if both are broken, remove them from the cabinet and see if there's anything that I can do uh, to repair them or anything that I could do to correct the situation without having to go and replace the speakers and then ultimately, short of that, replace the speakers and call it a day. I'm gonna start by taking off this cable. I know that the cable polarity is right based on what's set up here with this red and black. That being said, there's nothing on these speakers themselves that indicates polarity. I'm sure that I could find it uh, very quickly with the battery. At the time, I'm just going by what was on here. It looked like the original solder work, right? So I'm gonna just get this off of here now. That'll rule out the cable and I'll hook something directly to this and see what we got. So I've directly connected a cable uh, from the back of the amplifier to the cabinet. I've got a guitar connected now. You can hear that ring. The crunch. Question is, is it the speaker on the left, the right, or both? I could be wrong, but it sounds to me like it's just the speaker on this side. A subscriber with uh, attention to detail has pointed out in my video that I have made a mistake uh, due to a problem with a cable or connection, right? When you get down to ohms, you can make a mistake, and notably, uh, this test here with the two speakers uh, was returning in and around 8 ohms, right? And it can't be in parallel. It is, in fact, uh, 4 ohms when you take away the uh, impedance through the cable, right? And I will point out that I now have checked very carefully now. We're just seeing uh, just above 4 ohms with the connections, with these cables tested and verified on fresh solder to ensure that everything is correct and this is both speakers in circuit. I've taken that value 4.7, this is the value from the speakers. Then I've tied the cable connectors together here from the test cables. And we can see there were something that comes into play here too in that overall value. I wanna say thank you for capturing that. I did miss that in the original testing, though I did put the wrong brick on the device I wasn't pumping any substantial power through this amplifier. Wouldn't have caused any serious problem, but it's definitely good to know in the future. I've gone and disconnected the speakers from each other, and the first thing I'm doing uh, is I'm going to do independent impedance measurements. I've hooked up the first one. In the first speaker, we're seeing about 9 ohms, so that looks okay. Second speaker sitting about 9.5 ohms. That one's okay, too. Got the amp back up and running, but only the left speaker's operational. This is the one that... I believe to be good. When I hit the low string, I can hear a little bit. It may be something actually in the speaker itself. This one is not nearly as bad as the other one. to the other speaker. So now we're on this speaker. That sounds terrible. OK, 
Okay, so both speakers are acting up to a degree. This one is significantly worse. We're going to start by removing the one on the left and having a look and see if there's just anything inside of it. The cone is not in bad shape for its age. We could see some of the end here is worn away. This could actually be repaired. This is, this is an easy fix. Not bad at all. Down here it's fine, but what I'm wondering is, is if all of this dust and dirt, we can see big piles of garbage here that's collected. If this is vibrating and resonating and causing some of this sound, what I'm gonna do is take a brush and delicately sweep this right onto the table. No vacuum cleaner, just gonna very delicately sweep it right onto the table. It is possible all this vibrating in the cone could cause noise. There we go. We could also see areas that paper has disconnected and cracked. These things vibrating back and forth could also cause noise. This will have to be repaired as well. So I got some piece of paper towel here. I've peeled back in a single ply. I've cut this piece out specifically for a small test piece. I'm gonna be using some E6000 glue that's not going to uh, harden when it dries, it's sort of uh, rubberized. And I'm going to take some of that glue and I wanna evenly coat this piece of paper towel just like this. It's gonna be messy. I want to work it into the paper towel. It should become clear when I do that. We could see that happening. But not so hard that I that I rip it. Definitely don't want to rip it. I just sort of press it. And use the toothpick to hold it in place. And press it. Use the toothpick to release it. I might need some more glue. That's fine. I'll roll the toothpick up and down the piece of paper towel. I mean, I'm starting with a small piece here. It'd be much more efficient to do a larger section at one time. Once that piece of paper towel is sufficiently coated, I can lift it off like that. I'm just going to apply it to a, a section in question here as demonstration. Now we we'll just wait for that piece to dry. Naturally, I'd be using a, a much larger piece, but I just wanted to demonstrate that. I could even make the piece on a slight curve uh, to fit the circumference. I wouldn't want to go too big, right? Because then it'd be hard to deal with. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, some more patches and run it around here, run around the perimeter. And again, this is a rubberized glue. So when it dries, it, it will still be flexible. It's not going to harden. This speaker's finished, everything's repaired, as well as two small holes up here were also filled, right? So all of the work is done and everything's been cleaned. And the smart thing to do is get this back in the cabinet as quick as possible before I ruin anything. Got the speaker bolted back in. I, I realized that the one nut is missing. I'll have to replace that, that's fine. I'm able to look into the work and see that it came out really nice. I'm gonna let this sit overnight. I'm not gonna disturb it. When I do fire this one up, it's going to sound great. I've got it plugged back in and on the bench. We only have one speaker running. It is a speaker on the left. I've got the boss sitting here with the guitar plugged in to reevaluate it. Volume is lowered, of course, because uh, all of that power is now only going to one of the speakers. Hey, do me a favor, hit low note, E. Get a little, little more volume on it. Okay, hit it. 
How's the sound? Does it sound like that that uh, distortion that you heard earlier, the last time we played this, is is gone or or greatly improved? It's not a new speaker; it's a repaired speaker. Oh yeah, it's a lot better. But you heard it last time the other speaker. I'm going to move the other speaker so we can listen to what it used to sound like. Uh huh. If you get to let me redo what I just played because I messed up three times. It wasn't on the video because it's edited out. I know. Go ahead, do it. Oh. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> is in my way. I'm sorry. I can't. Stand. I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. Ooh. Stop breaking my guitar. I'm, it's not a guitar anymore. You I, got the A minor that time. Oh my god. You got the A minor that okay, time. Get, get, get rid of the... Rewind. Rewind. <laughs> I'm gonna get this at some point tonight. Sorry. Oh. I'm running out of film. Well then, delete something. I'm gonna get this part right. Okay, do it. Okay. Oh, was I supposed to hit record? You're kidding me. Oh, Jesus. I, I forgot to hit record. No, in all honesty, though, um, the speaker sounds better, right? So it would be worth it to obviously go and repair the other one now. Let's do, let me, let me plug in the other one right quick so you can hear what it sounded like. Okay, now we have the broken speaker. Play it again. Speaker out, and I'm gonna fix the other one now. Good night, Gracie. Same process. We're gonna remove this speaker now. Get a first view of this removed, just as I have taken it out. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Get a close-up look at this damage. Looks like got a lot of dirt here. Looks like something to burrowed and eat into the center of that. And perimeter work over here. Perimeter. Not as extensive as the last one. Still a problem, right? But we're going to have a look in there. As well as obviously all the dirt here. We're going to start just like last time with the sweep out. We'll raise the speaker. Oh, it is in here thick. This needs to be broken loose. That in and of itself can be a problem when it's that thick. That's much worse than the other speaker. That's just one pass. And it's holding, holding a portion of the uh, speaker cone to the cabinet. I'm still digging in with the, with the brush, as you can see, starting to break through to the actual paper. I have to take my time so I don't damage anything. We can see paper right there is now exposed. Was that a contributing factor? We'll, we'll find out. Much better. Here we go, all the repairs are done on the speaker. Little repairs, big repairs, everything in between. We can see a lot of detail work on all the holes that were chewed through here. Big piece over here. We're gonna let that dry and we are going to test it out. I've decided I'm not gonna do anything about that dust cover for the uh, coil there. I'm just gonna put it back in, really nothing to do. I've got the speaker back in. I'm gonna be testing it first individually. Make sure it's cleared up before I rewire it to this speaker. Yeah, that sound is gone. I'm gonna hook both speakers back up together now. Got both speakers reconnected now. So we'll do a little demo here. Boy, that sounds a lot better than our first demo, right? She's nodding her head in approval. Now she's giggling. It's a nice little vibrato when you do that. anymore so it looks like I was actually able to get those speakers fixed and they sound pretty good on this uh, silver tone cabinet and I thank everybody for sticking around for an extra chapter in this silver tone restoration series I hope to be able to get this amplifier and cabinet down to cornerstone music 
I'm going to try and schedule some time with Pete so he could go and give this amplifier a full test and critique to tell me how good I got this thing actually working. So again, I want to thank everybody for sticking around and I hope everybody enjoyed this adventure in the restoration of this amplifier. Thanks for watching.